The next thing that we are going to do is uh, optimization over images. So this is again interesting and uh, it eventually led to this whole field of adversarial deep learning or adversarial machine learning in general, right? So we'll see what this is. Suppose I have a trained convolutional neural network, okay? And now I want to figure out what kind of image should I pass through this so that it gets recognized as a dumbbell. Why would I want to do, I want, want to have such a weird objective? Can you think of a reason why I would want such a weird objective? I know there's a convolutional neural network which can distinguish K classes. These classes could be anything. Now I want to deliberately create images which get passed as the dumbbell class. Why would I want to do this? Okay, okay, you're going into the details. So I'll give you an application, right? Suppose this network is supposed to do face detection and the K classes which are there are K people, right? Now you want to say what kind of image should I feed to this so that I get recognized as Amitabh Bachchan, right? So now that would have certain benefits in various high places and so on, right? So I would want to do that, right? So that's the whole idea behind adversarial learning. So now I am asking this question that I want and here it's in a, of course a toy setup. There's no reason I, why I would want to generate dumbbells. But say if I'm going to, if it's an automatic verification whether my product looks like a dumbbell or not, I might want to do this, right? So you could think of all sorts of reasons why you want to do this. So what we'll do is, uh, the question that we are interested in is that I have a blank slate with me. It just contains some pixels. I want to be able to modify this pixel so that my class, dumbbell class gets fired. Now we have done enough gradients, enough backpropagation, everything in this class. So I'll ask you to give me a solution for this. And the hint is, treat the image itself as a parameter matrix. The second hint is, assume that all of this is going to remain constant. You're not going to change any of this. And you have initialized your parameters, which is the image pixels to zeros. That means you have started with a gray image. I'll change the question a bit, only a bit, and all of you will be able to answer this, okay? Suppose my network is trained, and now I want to change the weights in this layer so that my accuracy improves, so that when it's a dumbbell class, it predicts dumbbell. How will you do that? So I'll pass the same image. What will you do? How will you change the weights in this layer? Backpropagation, what's the update rule? Say the gradient descent update rule. Say the gradient descent update rule. W is equal to? Okay, you guys actually unanimously said gradient is an update rule. <laughs> okay, so W is equal to W minus, oops, 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 okay, minus eta into, okay, that's what you will do. Now, if I ask you the question for this, you can answer it. But if I ask you the same question here, why can't you answer it? So here, what were you doing? Computing the gradients of the loss with respect to the weights. What will you do here? It puts with respect to each of these pixels and then update this pixel by using what formula? I1, that's the first pixel is equal to I1 minus eta gradient I1, where what is gradient I1 actually? Everyone gets the intuition, right? You can do it now. Uh, so we could pose this as an optimization problem where what we want to do is given an image we want to maximize the score of the output class. And I also want some regularization because whatever I get, I want it to look like an image, right? So we'll see different types of regularization for doing this, some very simple regularizations. But this is the overall idea, right? So any generic loss function is always the training loss plus the regularization. So I've just kept both, the training loss as well as the regularization. What's my training loss? The score for the class that I'm interested in. And what are the parameters of this object, of this optimization problem? The input pixels, right? So far we had already be, always been doing W comma B, but instead of W comma B, you now have I as the parameters of your optimization problem. Is that fine? And now we can just think of the entire image as a collection of parameters and we can now update the weights of this matrix, which is the image matrix. Okay, so let us see how we'll do it. So we'll start with a zero image, as I said. Set the score vector to all zeros and one for the class that I'm interested in, okay? Now compute the gradient 
of this core vector with respect to i k. Right? So, I want this quantity to be maximized, everything else to be 0. So, that is what my loss function is. So, I am going to compute the gradient of each of the pixels with this. Now, I am going to update the pixel using my gradient descent rule, which I just explained previously. Now, I again do a forward. So, now instead of this 0 image, I have a modified image, slightly modified image because the pixels have moved away from 0 a bit based on the gradients. Now, this image I will pass back through the network and what will I do now? Again change. So, this is the same as the weight matrix, right? So, you should be able to visualize it exactly the same way as you would have visualized this. You had certain weights here, you change them a bit, again did the forward pass, again did the backward pass, change them a bit and kept doing this till Till convergence, right? Whatever is your definition for convergence. Till you are satisfied that instead of score of 1, you are at least getting a score of 0.9 or 0.95 or something like that, right? So, you will keep doing this, right? Till convergence. At the end, you will, you, all of you can imagine that this image will keep getting modified, okay? So, now let us see if you run this score, uh, the run this uh, code for certain classes. So, I am in, interested in the dumbbell class and I have ran that algorithm starting with the 0 image and this is the kind of image that I end up with. Uh, do you see a dumbbell here without me drawing it, right? So, if you go back and look at it, you will see that there are a lot of these dumbbell like shapes which have actually appeared here. The color is of course very much different. I do not think dumbbells are of these colors ever, but you can see that it is actually trying to produce that shapes which will cause the dumbbell output to fire. Now, what is interesting is that it is being very uh, redundant. So, it is not trying to generate a single dumbbell, it is generating a lot of dumbbells of different orientations. So, it is just keeping its basis covered so that some of this should actually fire and cause the dumbbell output to be maximized, okay. Now, let us see if we take a cup, okay, and this is like the trophy cup, I believe. So, this is what is appearing here, and there is one more cup here, and there is one more cup here, right. So, it is generating these cups so that you can't be, you will not be able to see it, it is a different, oh it really looks like I am manipulating it, but I am not. You can go back and <laughs> check it, there, those cups are there, okay. And then for Dalmatian, actually this at least you can see some white and black spots, right, at least that is fine. So, Dalmatians are these dogs which have these white and black spots. So, and you can also see some kind of a shape here, right, which with my drawing. So, it is actually producing that dog like shape and it is producing multiple of those. So, it is being redundant and trying to compute that, right. And now you see, right, with these very arbitrary images, which to you and me, do not know, nowhere close to we will fire, we will classify this as Dalmatian. But for the machine, it is classifying this as a Dalmatian and this is bad, right, this is not good. There is nothing to be impressed about this, this is actually bad because I can give it these horrible images and still get away by something called as a Dalmatian. So, if I want to sell some a Dalmatian on OLX, this is what I can do, right. I can upload this image and a machine would trigger it, I think someone would buy it, okay. So, and this is a bell paper, uh, so you can go back and see, you see a lot of bell papers here and similar for lemon and so on, right. So, various classes, you can see that it is actually trying to produce those shapes, but it is nowhere actually producing a clear image which is undoubtedly of that object, right. It is generating something which can later on be used to fool the network, right, which is not a good thing, okay. And we can actually do this for any arbitrary neuron. So, I was trying to actually fire this neuron, which was the output layer, but maybe I want something else to fire here. So, I want to actually see what is it that causes this neuron to fire. So, I could repeat the same algorithm by setting something here as high and then again back propagating the gradients only from here and reconstructing the image every time so that this neuron then fires, right, okay. So, so, these are what the updated images look like which excite certain neurons in some layers. So, what does this look like? It is actually like a pirate's ship if it is not very clear. Like you have these multiple layers of things and something like this, okay. So, it is some neurons are actually firing for this kind of a pattern. There are some other neurons which are firing for different kinds of patterns and so on, right. So, you can just create images which cause certain neurons to fire and all this is a lot of fun to do. So, you should, I would encourage you to do this. You'll get more insights into what your network is. <laughs>